All right, continuing part two. Okay, Matthew 16. And he answered and said unto them, When it is evening, you say it will be fair weather. You can discern the space of the sky, but you cannot discern the sign of the times. Fools say nobody knows the hour we live in. The world is living life as if. They just continue to eat, drink, and play. All right. Pre-tribulation and rapture in Matthew 24 until verse 31. Um, that actually doesn't say. 31. Uh, 31 is the the rapture, if you will. It's the when we're when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are lifted up to meet with him. All right. First Thessalonians 4. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of a, the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So, yeah, the, those are parallel verses, no question. Now, this same Paul wrote, Neither is there is neither God, Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. James, servant of God, Lord Jesus Christ, twelve tribes scattered abroad. Greetings. And they overcome the blood of the Lamb by the word of the testimony, and they love not their lives unto death. Clearly we are not appointed unto wrath. Okay, I'm not sure how you're relating those with that, but all right. Also, that is that I'm not sure how you're I'm not sure what point you're making there. Okay, the Bible does not say the wrath of Jesus Christ. Well, the wrath of God is the wrath of Jesus. Okay, because Jesus is God. The Bible says the revelation of Jesus Christ. The great tribulation is not seven years of wrath. I can agree the great tribulation is seven years of sorrow. Well, um, I'm not so sure that I, I'm not hung up on the seven years, man, like you are. And I'm not going to, therefore, I'm not going to be hung up on five months of wrath either. And it was given to them that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented five months. And their torment was the torment of scorpion. The book of Revelation is not something to fear. I agree. The great tribulation is not something to fear. I can agree. The seed of wheat, the sheep are sealed on their foreheads by God through the blood of Jesus Christ, right? And when we are born of the Spirit of God, we are sealed with the Holy Seal of promise. And it was commanded that they should not hurt the grass. Uh, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Jesus Christ was sealed. We are sealed when we are born of God. Now, they were not for the meat which perish. But for the meat which endures unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him has God the Father sealed. Christians are sealed. There you go. You got it. In whom ye also trusted after that ye have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and also that after that ye believe, you were sealed with the Holy Seal, uh, Holy Spirit of promise. So that's kept saying that over and over and you there you go that's good that's a good ending point and so you're wondering where you're erring at uh calling jesus the antichrist would probably be the biggest error that you're making all right um so did i make that up i thought i thought you were saying hmm maybe i'm mistaken I apologize. Okay, I I don't know what why I said that. Um, I really maybe I need another cup of coffee because I thought somewhere 
you said Jesus was the Antichrist right there. Okay, you're calling Jesus uh, the certificate of vaccination, uh, vaccination identification. Um, there you go, right there. And then you go even further, and you say the white horse is the Antichrist. Now, correct me if I'm mistaken, but Revelation 6, the white horse, the first seal in the beginning was God. The white horse is Jesus Christ. And there's no possible way to support this argument that the white horse is anything other than Jesus Christ. Now, I understand if you repeat a lie long enough, people will start to believe it. And that's what's going on. People believe the white horse is the Antichrist. But it's based on nothing at all from the Bible. Nothing at all. In fact, there's not even that much information given to us specifically about this white horse in Revelation 6. And I mean, people will make so much out of it and then twist it. When all it says is two simple lines. Okay. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And then it goes on to the second seal. Okay, so the first seal, we know it's Jesus Christ because he came forth conquering and he conquers. He conquered death. And you can't say the Antichrist conquered death. You're giving the Antichrist too much credit. And then you can't say, I mean, you can, but you're wrong to say that Jesus Christ is the Antichrist. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, I don't know what you got against Jesus. I, I don't know why it's so important for you to look at this and say, oh, that's the Antichrist. And I guarantee you, you didn't come up with that on your own. Somebody planted that idea in your head. Because it's not here in Revelation 6. There should be absolutely no doubt whatsoever that that is Jesus Christ. All right, so that, that I mean, that's the big thing. Um, you know, this... You're hung up on seven years and five months, and um, I would just uh, encourage you not to be so hung up on that beat, because you can't you can't support that with scripture, and you can't draw the line in the world what we see today. Uh, it's relative numbers that it symbolizes, and uh, I mean beyond that, uh, I you know I absolutely agree that. Uh, we are uh, in tribulation now, and things are just getting worse and worse and worse. And I mean, we see that all through the Bible, right? Uh, things will get progressively worse. If things were not getting progressively worse, there would be no need for Jesus to come back. If things were going to get better and better and better, no need for him to come back. But, you know, Jesus himself says... Except those days be shortened, no flesh shall be saved. And the reason is because things are progressively getting worse. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake. And the elects are those who are born of God. And like you pointed out, unless I'm making this up, there is neither Jew nor Greek. All right? that God is not a respecter of persons. All right? So there is no special elect. And then other people that are saved. The elect are the saved. The elect are those who believe in Jesus Christ. Those who are born of the Spirit of God. And it's about faith. It's always been about faith. And uh, we all need a Savior. Everybody. There's nobody that doesn't need a Savior. All right. So I think that covers everything. I appreciate that comment. It's, it's long. And it's copy and pasted. Normally when people copy and paste, I just delete it. Uh, so keep that in mind for future reference. Oh, ouch. Yeah, I forgot about that. I should save that, shouldn't I? There we go. All right. Anyways, have a great day.